Good morning and welcome. We are continuing our uh, look at our hymnal, the Lutheran Service Book. And today we are not going to be looking in next for, uh, for the next couple of weeks. We're not going to be looking at a hymn, at least that's not my plan. Um, but instead, we're going to be looking at the front part of the hymnal and we're going to be looking at a prayer. Uh, it's a two page prayer. The sun is getting in the way. It's called the Litany. It's on pages 288 and 299. There is a spoken version and there's also a sung version. Um, I'm not going to sing it to you, sorry, um, but I will read it to you. But I'm not going to do it all at once. I'm inviting you to do that, uh, especially to our members. I have encouraged you already um, to make this a daily part of your Lenten reflection during the season. Um, but what I want to do is I just want to take a little bit, um, section by section, um, during the season of Lent. Um, I'll pray it. If you have a hymnal, you are welcome to, to uh, respond. There's a, a part that I will do, and, and I'll do the whole thing, but then there's a spoken response, as you'll see in the hymnal. You see, here it is. Here's the part that I'll do, and here's the part that, the, the, um, that you can respond with if you have your hymnal. And we'll do that as a prayer. And then after that, I'll spend a little bit of time talking about this prayer and, um, and each one of the sections. And, and hopefully you'll find that uh, helpful, um, at least in terms of understanding why this is such a, a great prayer um, and, and, and well worth your time to use. Okay, so we're going to start um, by praying just this first part of the litany together. Let us pray. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. Amen. Now again, the litany continues on and we're going to look a little bit at a time. We're just praying a section at a time. And, and I wanted to do it this way because I know I can see the look on people's faces sometimes when we use the litany. Um, I can even hear it, I think, in the voices a little bit. And I certainly have heard the complaint um, that this is a very repetitious prayer, especially the part that I just read to you. We're not used to Maybe we're not even used to praying together as a group. Maybe you're not even used to that. But, or, or you're not used to um, praying written prayers or seeing any value in that. That could be. I'm going to assume that those things aren't problems for you. If they are, we can talk about that. But what I'd like to do is, is deal with a, another issue, and that is just the uncomfortableness of saying the same thing over and over again without falling into the temptation of thinking that it has no value, that repetition has no value. And the first case that I'd like to make to say no, it does, is this. Understand that the litany was written, I'm not even 100% sure, I think something like the 1300s. It was revised by Martin Luther in the 1500s, and I think it was just a matter of, of three or four decades after he revised it um, that it was translated into English. So by the time you get to the late 1500s, this is already being used in the English language which is, um, is pretty rapid, um, pretty rapid. And, and the reason is because it's such a great prayer. Um, once we got rid of some of the things that, that, that weren't so good in it, um, we focused on the, the good parts and got rid of the parts that didn't point to Christ. And, um, and we had something really beautiful here. Um, but the, the, one of the main reasons for these short back and forths between the person who's leading the prayer and the people who are responding to the prayer, presumably a pastor and his parishioners, is because it was written for people who didn't have the book, that had to remember it, right? And so there's these short responses so that they get to participate in the prayer. And, and it would have been sung, and, and we had that sung version, but, but it would have been sung back and forth. It would have been sung so that everybody could hear, and it would have been these short and repetitious things so everybody could remember. In fact, from what I read in the, you can see it all the way up there on the altar, just barely, the altar book has introduction to all these things. And in that introduction, it says that this was often used outside um, by congregations outside in, in processionals. So as they were walking in, perhaps as they were 
um, coming into the church even. It could have been at the very beginning of a service that they would have, have been outside singing this back and forth. And, and so they had to remember it, right? And it kind of makes sense, the back and forth, these, these shorter responses back and forth. So if it seems a little awkward, then maybe we should sing it. And if you don't like that idea, that's okay. We don't have to sing it. In fact, you don't even have to do it with anybody else. You don't have to process around your house or anything like that. Um, you can use it privately and in your home. And still there's value to repetition. You repeat things, right? Why? Why do you repeat things? To remember them, right? We repeat things that, are, that we want to remember. And why do we want to remember most, most of the things we want to remember? Why? Why is it? Because it's important, right? We emphasize things by repeating them. And the reason we emphasize certain things, hopefully, is because those things are valuable, because they're important. And especially when it comes to prayer, we need to recognize that this repetition is extremely important. The, the stopping, the, the being still, the, the, the getting my mind focused on the thing that it needs to be focused on. Before I started doing this video, I was working on three or four projects. One was on my computer, one was on my phone, one was behind me on my desk. And this is the way your life is too, running a mile a minute. This is... This, this repetition, this short back and forth is a way for us Christians to practice prayer, prayer and meditation. In secular meditation, even in pagan meditation, there's these, these short mantras, there's this repetition, right? There is value to that. The problem is what they're saying isn't at all helpful. And if they call it a prayer, it, they're praying to the wrong God. But we are praying to the triune God, and that's here, right? God the Father in heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit. So we've got the right God, the God who creates, redeems, and sanctifies or makes us holy. That's the God that we're, we're going to make our request to, that we're going to pray to, right? And, and so this is getting our mind um, separated from all the chaos that's going on around us and focused. It, these, these first couple of short responses are like this, this wonderful deep cleansing breath, of fresh air. This is who I am in the presence of, and this is who I am talking to, and, and it, it's focusing us, right? It's focusing us, not only by what the leader says, not only by pointing to the fact that we're talking to the triune God, but listen to the responses of the people that, that hopefully if you had your hymnal, you prayed along with me. Here's what you said with, without the part uh, that the leader says, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. First of all, that's not hard to remember, is it? Second of all, it's emphasizing something. Why? Because it's important. Who is this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that you're praying to? He's the one who desires to show you mercy, right? Three times you said, have mercy. And then you stopped and you said, hear us, right? Three times you prayed for mercy and then you cried out, hear us. Hear this cry for mercy. And then what do you, so the next three things. Three times have mercy, and then you say, hear us. And then another three times, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. This is what the prayer is about, right? This is what God is about. This is why he invites us to come to his throne, to ask for mercy so that, so that he can give us, so that, so that we can receive what, what he desires to give us, which is mercy, right? Finally, it wraps up. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us, help us, good Lord. This is all getting us focused on what comes next. And you can look at what comes next. You can pray what comes next. But we're not going to talk about what comes next until next week. In the meantime, I would invite you to think a little bit more about these words. They're simple words. They're not hard to understand. You don't need to to think on them because you don't understand what they mean. You need to think on them because they're important, because they point us to a God who desires to show mercy, who has shown us mercy through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross and who has risen from the dead. Focus on these things, not because they're difficult to understand, 
but because they are important and because our life here and in eternity depends on this being true. You have a God that is merciful. You have a God that loves you. Right. So, pray the litany. Focus on these words. And let me know what you think. If you have questions about this or about an upcoming part of the litany, let me know. Um, as you pray the litany, um, let me know how it goes. If you have concerns or questions or, or just you want me to know that you're doing it and that you're, you're, you're enjoying um, this, this time in prayer, whatever. Let me know how it's going. And especially if you're a member, let me know um, how it's going. Um, I pray that it's a blessing to you. God bless your week. We will uh, see you on Sunday.